Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cornelius Robinson and this is Overshoot. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to go from idea to PCB in less than 15 minutes. So let's get into it. I quickly built this simple light sensor that turns on an LED when it gets dark, or in this case, when I cover the photoresistor with my finger. Let's say I wanted to build a PCB for this. If you're not familiar with my channel, I use Flux to design all of my PCBs. Flux is an online PCB design tool that offers circuit simulation, layout nesting, and a cohesive user experience. Even though it's currently in beta testing, it's still my go-to for PCB design. Also, it's free to use, and by supporting them, you can keep all your projects top secret. So you can sign up or sign in if you have an account. This is my profile page with all of my parts and projects. I'm just going to start with a new blank project. Over on the left, you can see the library panel. This is where we can find almost any part we need. Almost all of these parts have been created by the Flux community. To make things easier, we can use these filters. For example, I want a part that has a footprint, simulation model, and 3D model. Let's start with the LED. I need a 5mm through hole. All I need to do is drag this into the canvas. Okay, now I want to get an NPN transistor. I've added this one in the past, so I'll only filter by my parts. Good. Now it's easy to move parts around. To rotate a part, just right click and select a direction. Okay, let's grab a generic resistor. This is a resistor that doesn't have a part number assigned to it yet, but we can add that later. When I added this ground symbol, I get a notification that it has an update. I'll just review that. And check this to have the part automatically update in the future. Okay, now I need a power source. This is purely for simulation purposes, so it won't show up on the PCB layout. Next, I'll get a photoresistor. Notice it doesn't have a simulation model, which may or may not be important to your design. To demonstrate how simulations work in Flux, I'll use a fixed resistor in place of the photoresistor. This works as a voltage divider. When there isn't as much light, the photoresistor will increase in resistance and cause the transistor to turn on. One unique thing about Flux is the simulator is always running. We can enable the current on this resistor. And, oh, I should show you the voltage on the DC source too. Now, watch what happens when I change this resistor from 6k ohms to 2k ohms. The current drops on R1, indicating that Q1 is now off. One thing I need 
before I start the PCB layout is to add a couple of terminals. These will give me a couple of pads to solder to. Of course, we can rename them as well. I also need to make sure R3 doesn't show up in the PCB layout. So if I select it and scroll down to the properties here, I can edit this and add a new property. There are many to choose from, but what I need is towards the bottom. Here we go, exclude from PCB. We just need to click on it and select true. Now it won't show up on the PCB. So I mentioned earlier that these were generic resistors. That means we can easily change the value, footprint, and add a part number. Since I already have the resistors, I'm not going to worry about a part number, but I will change the footprint to match. I'll just do the same for R1. Just to give you an example though, this transistor does have a part number, so I'm able to see the pricing and stock in real time. Okay, let's move on to the PCB layout. With Flux, we don't need to launch a separate software. Just click on the PCB tab up here. The layout here is our current board. Over on the left, we can click on the Objects tab and see the structure of the layout. It contains all of the components and nets. With Layout selected though, we can go to the Layout Rules on the right and add an object-specific rule. Just like the properties, there are many options to choose from, but I want the Size Rule. If I just enter one dimension, it will change the board size in the X and Y directions. However, if I use two dimensions, Flux uses the first one as the X axis and the second one as the Y axis. For this project though, I'm just going to make a 30 millimeter square board. Now we just need to untangle the air wires. Rotating the part in the PCB editor is the same as the schematic editor. The keyboard shortcut is Control or Command Bracket. If you click on the little green dot, it will start trace routing, but it will also highlight the air wire, which is useful if you have a lot of air wires. Let's make these terminals a little more solder friendly. Again, we can select the component and add an object specific rule. In this case, we'll use the pad type rule. The default is SMD, but we want standard. This is basically the same as a through hole pad. Now, to change the ground terminal, we don't need to go through that whole process again. Instead, we can copy and paste only the layout rules. Maybe it's just my OCD, but I like to make these perfectly aligned. Just select them both, right click, and align horizontal center. 
Okay, the last thing I'm going to do to these terminals is add a silkscreen text. To do that, just right click the terminal and go to add text. Make sure to select the object and add yet another object specific rule. This time we want rotation Z. Then we just need to change the position. Again, the first number is the x-axis and the second number is the y-axis. There we go. I'll just do the same for the ground terminal. Now we can finally start routing traces. For the 5 volt rail, we obviously don't want to cross the path of another trace. One option is to right click while routing and move the trace to the bottom layer. Now I'm not going to route the ground net because the rest of the area will be a ground plane. Flux does this by default. We can turn on the visibility by opening the layers and selecting this little icon. The same is true for the bottom layer. You might have noticed that we have four layers, but we're only using two. So let's change that by adding an object specific rule to layout. This time we're looking for stack up. Standard 2 layer. There we go. You know, these traces are looking a little thin for my liking. So let's add yet another object specific rule to layout. The default trace width is 10 mils, but let's go with 20 mils. Yeah, that looks great. Flux also has a 3D viewer built in, so let's look at that. Nice. These parts look exactly like the physical parts I used earlier. When we're happy with the design, we can simply click on the Flux logo and export the Gerber files. Then we could just send it off to a PCB manufacturer. And that's how you go from idea to PCB in under 15 minutes with Flux. Make sure to like this video if you found it helpful and subscribe for more content every week.